And so welcome back to another one, you guys. If you are new to the channel, my name is Andrew with Younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on our inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. Today we are in the new 2023 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross because there are actually several changes for the 2023 model year. We'll be going over those, of course. Not only that, you get America's Best Warranty being 5 years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain, and then double powertrain warranty if you were to purchase a Younger Mitsubishi being 20 years 200,000 miles on that powertrain that is pretty remarkable so reason enough to purchase from us but anyways ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 eclipse cross first one being the es starting at twenty five thousand seven hundred and ninety five dollars then you have the le for twenty seven thousand forty five se for twenty eight thousand forty five se package starting at twenty nine thousand forty five sel which is the one we are in today starting at twenty nine thousand two hundred ninety five dollars and the sel touring starting at thirty one thousand three hundred and ninety five dollars and so for the 2023 model year that super all-wheel control system is now standard across the board unlike for 2022 where front wheel drive came standard that super all-wheel control is now standard across the board so that is definitely a big win in my personal opinion but anyways powering the beast is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 152 horsepower at 5500 rpm 184 pound feet of torque coming in at 2000 rpm power sent to all four wheels which technically is a four wheel drive system but it's called super all-wheel control it was originally created for for rally racing so racing on the snow and the dirt so that pretty much tells you it was meant to be an off-road system to start with so that is pretty cool sent to the ground through a cvt 0 to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.6 seconds with mpg numbers coming in slightly different depending upon the trim level that you go with so for the es you get 25 in the city 28 on the highway but for all other trims 25 in the city 26 then on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the eclipse cross Wanted to mention there's a couple drive modes. You got Sport and you got Eco. The Eco button's located just in front of the shifter there, but ultimately those drive modes will adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, and actually the traction control settings then as well. So like I alluded to there, we do have paddle shifters and that's just gonna be for the SEL trim level. So having said that, let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test at the same time. Keep in mind, this is gonna be simulated shifting because we are in a CVT after all, but still, Let's see how quickly they react and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 Eclipse Cross here up to speed. All right, so before we do this, to put it in full manual shift mode, just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. It is then going to display what simulated gear you were in up on the gauges there. We're gonna go ahead and slide it into first gear. And these paddle shifters are absolutely massive and they feel kind of high quality as well, which is pretty cool. So right now it is holding the gear. It's not shifting, which I'm kind of surprised. That's awesome, but here we go. Okay, paddle shifters are quick, surprisingly. Not the quickest vehicle in the world, but the paddle shifters are dang quick. It's kind of cool. I kind of like them because like I said, they do feel high quality. They're absolutely mammoth, like Maserati style paddle shifters. These things are gigantic, which is really cool in my personal opinion. But again, not the quickest thing in the world. It'll be enough to get you merged onto the highway, but I'll pretty much just leave it at that. But then to get back full control to the Eclipse Cross, you just simply slide the shifter back to the right in case anybody was curious. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 11.9 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at 125 feet, which is pretty much right on par for the segment there. Uh, a lot of SUVs will come in in the 130s and sports sedans come in in the one teens. So 125 feet is probably right where you want to be at for the Eclipse Cross. And having said that, braking feel is not a soft braking feel. It definitely leads to the firmer side of things, which I personally appreciate it feels just like I personally would want the Eclipse Cross to feel like. So 100% braking is on point without a doubt. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes in my short little test drive here today, 
It's actually good. I know that Mitsubishi reworked the suspension to kind of uh, soften up the ride for the 2022 model year. So that carries on, of course, for the 2023 model year. So it is a pretty darn smooth ride for not having an adaptive suspension or an air suspension or anything fancy like luxury vehicles give you. So no issues for me. As far as cabin noise goes, we are going 55 miles per hour, 55 stay alive. And uh, it's okay. It's not bad. I get a little bit of wind noise coming from the driver's side window here, but honestly, it's nothing that would annoy me. It's perfectly fine. It's pretty much as expected. I'll put it that way. And I've actually heard worse, so definitely no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, again, it's right where I would think it would be. It's not a loose steering feel, believe it or not. A lot of SUVs do give you loose steering feels. It's not a heavy steering feel either. It's just where it should be, basically. Then as far as visibility goes, 100% on point. I think it was the 2021 Eclipse Cross that kind of went across the middle back there where you kind of impeded visibility a little bit, but then last year they changed that. So now visibility, at least out the back, is 100% perfect. Did want to also mention that when it comes to forward visibility, rain sensing windshield wipers come in the LE trim level and up having said that there has been no rain today whatsoever and they have already come on for me so i don't know what's up with that but i do like rain sensing windshield wipers though i will say that they are incredibly convenient so you don't even have to touch the windshield wipers when it starts to rain kind of like automatic headlights i guess you could say and believe it or not you can actually get a head-up display for the eclipse cross as well if you were to go with the sel or sel touring it is optional for those two trim levels i'll put it that way it doesn't come standard but there's a package option that can allow you to get that if you wanted it but anyways that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2023 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross finished in Labrador Black Pearl, in case anybody was curious of our exterior color. Another little fun fact, though, before we get started on the exterior, this one is made in 96% Japan. Typically, when I look at the window stickers of these vehicles, a lot of the times they are spread across the globe as far as where the parts come from, where the assembly is done, all that stuff. But this almost is a 100% JDM vehicle. So basically everything on this thing is coming from Japan. So a little fun fact for you. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front of the Eclipse Cross here. LED headlights are now standard on all trim levels of the Eclipse Cross. It did not used to be that way in the 2022 model year because last Last year, the ES and the LE trims came with halogens, but now even the ES, the bottom trim level, comes with LED headlights. So that is a huge win for the Eclipse Cross, and I absolutely love that. LED daytime running lights also coming standard. LED fog lights also standard for all trim levels across the board as well. Automatic headlights coming with the SE trim level and up. Automatic high beams coming with the LE trim level and up. And then silver accenting can be found on the front bumper for particular trim levels. I do like the black accenting that we have on this particular Eclipse Cross though because we have the black exterior and I think that looks dang good. I also like the chrome accents surrounding the headlights because it goes very well with the chrome Mitsubishi badging up front and the chrome Eclipse Cross lettering found on the front portion of the hood. So definitely a very nice looking front end to the Eclipse Cross without a doubt but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. And something else since we are around to the side of this one roof rails are going to be optional for all trim levels with an SE in it meaning the SE and the SEL trim levels so they're going to be optional we don't obviously have them today but chrome window surrounds do come standard. Rear privacy glass does come standard for all trim levels as well. Taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will get integrated turn signals they will be heated as well all of that comes standard for all trim levels you usually don't find that on other manufacturers so big fan of that if you were to go with the se trim level and up the side mirrors are also going to be power folding then as well that's pretty cool matte black side skirts will come standard can't really tell the difference though with the black exterior if you were worried about that Taking a look at the wheel setup, 16 inch two-toned alloys coming with the ES, 18 inch black painted alloys coming with the LE, and 18 inch two-toned alloys then coming with the SE and SEL trims. Therefore, that is obviously what you guys are looking at right now. But again, a very good looking side profile. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back because it is gonna differ slightly dependent upon the trim level that you go with. Let's go ahead and make our way to the back. And so all the way to the top, of course, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna, but just below that, that rear spoiler is going to substantially differ amongst the trim levels and so you will get a kind of more tamed rear spoiler for example with this SEL trim level that we have today but 
for the SE trim levels and then it's also optional on let's say the LE trim level as well but you get a much more aggressive rear spoiler with the SE and again optional on the LE as well so LED tail lights do come standard you do have some trim level badging on that rear tailgate as well so if you end up wandering onto a Mitsubishi lot that is a surefire way to distinguish what trim level you are looking at so obviously the easiest way down below you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath on the passenger side there nothing fancy there but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around to the back of the Eclipse Cross, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate. So simply just lift up on the lift gate itself and it's gonna obviously open up for you. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 23.4 cubic feet, which is a decent amount of space. If that was not enough space though, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 50.1 cubic feet. Obviously with the rear seats down there, there is a cargo cover that comes standard back there. I like seeing that. There's some cargo lighting. There's several tie down anchors there is a grocery bag hook and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will actually find a spare tire which i personally love as opposed to the fix a flat so that is a big win for me personally <laughs> then taking a look at the rear leg room that comes in at 37.1 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the back there there is a passenger side seat back mat pocket as well rear center armrest with cup holders there is a 12 volt power outlet heated rear seats are actually available on the sel trims we don't have it today but another one of those package options available for the sel trims if you wanted to spoil your rear passengers a little bit then make our way to the front seats cloth seating coming with the es and le trim levels leather suede combination i love that look i reviewed that one last year for the se trim levels leather seating coming with the sel that is what we are looking at right now heated front seats for the le trim level and up eight-way power driver seat for the se trim level and up eight-way power adjustable passenger seat then for the SEL trims. Overall for our SEL that we have today, seating was plenty fine, certainly comfortable. So no issues with taking this thing on a short test drive that I did today. So then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up. It is heated then for the SEL trim level and up. So Western Maryland here, we definitely get some cold weather. So heated steering wheel is definitely where it is at. So love the steering wheel on this thing. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here it's actually a pretty basic key you got your Mitsubishi logo on the one side when you flip it over lock it unlock and that's about it it is all keyless entry with a push button start though if you go with the SE trim level and up otherwise you're going to get that traditional turnkey start so having said that we do have that of course so all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button which is located directly to the right of the gauges and so speaking of once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital display front and center giving you your average miles per gallon at any given time of course what gear you're in if you are selecting your own gear through the simulated gears to the paddle shifters there outside temperature trip a trip b pretty much your basics that you would need on the digital portion of the gauges there then make our way to overall interior quality if you wanted a power panoramic roof that is available for the se and sel trims meaning it's an option with a package option for those two particular trim levels it doesn't come standard with either of them though home lane controls is going to be optional again for the sel trim level dual zone climate control comes standard on the se and sel trim levels gotta love that so both driver and passenger can each set their own temperatures up front there but if you were not to go with one of those trim levels the es and le still give you automatic climate control which is a big win because a lot of times that'll be manual on other manufacturers so you can still set your own temperature and it will get to that temperature automatically for you but you only got one particular temperature that you can set as opposed to the dual zone climate control i guess another cool little fun fact about the eclipse cross is if you open the glove box you actually have two different tiers so i guess you could put your mitsubishi motors eclipse cross manual up top and then you could put whatever else you want down below or really you could put whatever you want in there but i do like that it's two tiers you usually don't find that within the glove box there just in front of the shifter you got some rubberized storage you got dual usb charging ports 12 volt power outlet you have just to the right of the shifter your heated seat button 
is your super all-wheel control button to lock it in that four-wheel drive mode let's say if it's snowing out here in Hagerstown Maryland so that's definitely an option as well electromechanical parking brake just behind that also dual cup holders within the center armrest definitely a decent amount of space in there as well and I like the kind of carbon fiber ish look surrounding the power window buttons on the doors there and I love the gloss black look surrounding the cup holders so many manufacturers out there leave this as a matte gray plastic so I love that Mitsubishi added at least a gloss black design because it really is pretty darn easy to clean I have that in my own personal vehicle so it, it's very easy to clean so I do like that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech the infotainment screen I should say seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the ES eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the LE trim level and up but I will say Either display screen that you go with, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. If you go with the SE trim level and up, you're going to get factory navigation system. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. The ES and LE trims are going to give you four speakers. Then the SE trim level and up is going to give you a six speaker sound system. So therefore, that is the one we have today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And... Let's test out the clarity of this one. I gotta be honest, not that bad for a six speaker sound system. I've heard worse six speaker sound systems. So quite honestly, it, it's not gonna blow you away. But that is not bad, honestly, for the size of this vehicle, that's right on point for what a sound system should sound like for the Eclipse Cross. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put this vehicle in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but you will also get that bird's eye view you guys are looking at on the right there if you were to go with the SEL trim level. So that is pretty darn cool. And that gives you that panoramic view, basically. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but there is some new standard safety for the 2023 Eclipse Cross. Another big change here. Lane departure warning is now standard for all trims across the board, along with automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. Whereas in the past, you had to go with upper trim levels. Now it's standard across the board. So that's pretty cool. SE trim level and up is going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And then the SEL that we have today is going to add to that adaptive cruise control as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Eclipse Cross, this is a very good looking SUV, in my personal opinion. It's got very nice design to it, at least on the exterior. America's best warranty as well. You can't argue with that. You get five years, 60,000 miles, bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain, and younger Mitsubishi, it's 20 years, 200,000 miles on the powertrain. So that is wonderful. LED headlights now coming standard. I think I remember saying exactly that in my 2022 Eclipse Cross video, recommending that Mitsubishi should add that standard for all trim levels. And what do you know? They listened to me and now it is standard for all trim levels. So that is pretty darn cool. All right, so but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow Younger Mitsubishi at social media at the bottom of the screen. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews and everything else that goes on at the dealership, we do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. And we will see you guys all in the next video. Bye.